We're taking the Easton Made Ultra Wood Splitter to a different wood yard. We're getting rid of it. Come on. Here we go. It's hard to get rolling when you got stuff on it. Yeah, we're going to a new wood yard. And uh, you're going to see two Ultras, not just one, two. There we go, we're ready to rock and roll. So yes, the Ultra is leaving the wood yard. We're going about two miles that way over to Travis Arndt's wood yard. He also has an Ultra. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go side by side, look at them, kind of compare them. Look at the wear on mine compared to his, because his has only got maybe a couple hundred cords through it. Mine's got a couple thousand through it. We're gonna look at the differences between the engines that we have. We're gonna do a little splitting so you can see the speed difference. I'm guessing mine's gonna be a little slower and a little weaker because it's older like me. So we're gonna go check it out right now. I am now at Travis's. I brought my Ultra. That is his Ultra. We're gonna talk about which one is better looking. They me? look about the same. No, I meant me and you. Oh, definitely you. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I'm the ugliest guy in the room today. No, 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 I'm the ugliest and the dumbest. I get to be both. <laughs> so what we're gonna talk about is the differences between them. There's little things, nothing major. Of course, mine was one of the earlier ones. If I remember right, mine was like number 66 or something like that, 69, Ooh, somewhere in it's there. It's an old one. And yours is probably in the thousands, I'm guessing. Probably. Probably. Because I got it last November. Yep. Now, I have had mine now, I think, about not quite four years. I haven't even had mine a year yet. Yeah, yeah. No, mine's been excellent. Mine's got probably a couple thousand full cords through it, and yours has? Probably about 250 full cords through. And if you guys are wondering why they look like this with uh, grease and sawdust, and messiness and oil and, and dirt mud that is because we use, we our use them we're not cleaners we're users yes and we are not sitting in a fire station polishing the engine we just don't have time for that no um, if you go to really really high productive full-time firewood wood yards most of whom are very messy oh yeah because they're working making wood that's you don't get paid to clean you get paid to make wood so you pay to produce i would love to polish it up and rub it with a diaper once in a while but that's I'm, just not I'm a reality not, not that guy so we're going to talk about the differences number one on mine i have put on this gusset or my brother kenny did i should say we put this gusset on because i had mine um broken completely off and years i see has been hit on been your hit handle quite a few on the times. top wedge there Mine's so a little taller, hit. and I don't have a gusset yet. Yep, and so when we did mine, we moved it back a little bit, and then we put the gusset on it. And uh, so you can see that's the difference there. And like you said, yours looks like it's about a two inches taller, maybe. So yeah. it's a little higher. Two or three inches taller. You also have a button, and I don't have a yeah, button. Yeah, you do, right here. Do I? Right here. Yeah, right there. Oh, it's I on do. the opposite side. They moved it to the other side. Okay. So yours is on the wrong side. You have hit some nails and some um, spikes, I see, it looks like. More than one. And you've sharpened it, but yeah, you've been running stuff. You're doing a lot of tree service wood, so that's why. Now, do you have the four-way wedge also? I do have the four-way wedge. And do you shed. use it much? Not very much, not on see, tree service wood. Yeah, and when I'm doing tree service, people ask me all the time, how come you don't put your four-way in? Because you got to pull wood off of it all the you time. you got to pull wood off of it, and especially if you're doing naughty, crotchy, nasty crap, which we get a lot of. A lot of. Yeah, and he's got... He's got lots of lots of crotchy stuff here. When you got dirty, nasty crotches, they're hard to deal with, just saying. So the single wedge, you can make an ugly piece look pretty good most of the time because you can cut through it, which is why you're sharpening yours. Yep. And we're just talking, the bad thing about sharpening is that you weaken this, this front edge here, but what happens then is because it's weaker, you hit stuff, it is gonna chip. But when you've got cottonwood and Elm and elm. what else? What other kind of nasty stuff do we have? Cottonwood elm, poplar gets pretty nasty yeah, yeah. sometimes. Basically anything that's got knots and, and not straight green stuff, you got to kind of cut through it. So now I noticed your your little lip here did get bent already. Yep. And mine's been bent a lot. Because what happens, you'll get a piece coming in here and you have a piece and it'll turn, it'll yep. kick out here. And I've had a couple shoot out at me. Yep. So both, my, both mine have been bent slightly yours has just got a little one on that side and i mostly operate off this side so it's you're on this side yep usually so the, i call this the hot side because yep. you got the engine right here and your exhaust and i usually try to stay on this side yeah you like to stay cool and apparently <laughs> I, like I like to roast myself <laughs> well in the winter time i take that side because it's warmer one thing you don't have is you don't have this sticker you need that the wood is good sticker and you also don't have this one over here did you see this one you got to have one of these here 
Well, I, that's why I was hoping to go to your wood so, yard this today so I could get well, one of those stickers. Well, you're in luck. I just happened to have one. Look at that. <laughs> Finally, I've been wanting one of these since I've seen them. There you go. Now, you got to make sure it's clean. You can't put it on a greasy spot. You're going to have to rub a spot. Well, I'm going to so, have to put it on so later. Yeah, I have to put it on. Don't go put it on now because it'll just peel right off. But finally, you got a sticker. Um, so the other things that are different, obviously, you've got the Vanguard engine. Yep. And that is a 14 horsepower, right? Yep. And uh, I have the Honda, the GX, what is it, a 340? And I have no idea what horsepower that is. Somebody will tell me, I'm sure, in the comments. It's big enough. It works. Well, I also think that yours is a little more played on fuel than mine is because you're able to run, what, about three hours just on a over, tank? Just over three hours usually. And yes. I'm running at about two and a half before I run out of fuel. Okay, well, well, there's that. So now when you're running yours, do you run all premium? Yes. And all your small engines? I do too. All a premium, lot of, no ethanol. There's a lot of people, obviously, that live in what I call the corn states, you know, Iowa and Illinois and South, even they here can't we even get enough. it. I know, yep. but they can't even get it. Yep. So they have to travel sometimes hours to get a premium with no ethanol. But that's what I run on all my small engines, the good stuff. Absolutely. Because especially every, saws. Yeah, yeah. And every mechanic will tell you, do not run ethanol on any small engine. So the other things that are different is um, you just recently acquired a fuel shut off because Mike, the mechanic man, my mechanic man, I referred to you, and he put that in while he was doing some other repairs, correct? Yeah, we had a... Uh, an issue. We had an issue. The cylinder, the ram inside the cylinder, a seal had failed off the backside of that. Okay. So I was not able to build up the proper amount of pressure. We were getting parts from Easton made. They thought it was one thing. Yeah, we... You, we, we thought it was the pump. I was here and we put the pump, put a yep. new pump on. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. And then uh, he advised we, me we, that it might be... Um, Something of uh, uh, old ring in there where you could have there. leaking. That's what mine did. Yep. And that wasn't it. And then uh, then they sent you a new. Then cylinder. they sent me a whole new cylinder. Yeah, yeah. All of that. The bad thing is it took some time because you were down for a while and because you didn't yep. know what it was. You're not a mechanic. Nope. I'm not a mechanic. Mike knew without even looking at it. He said, "Well, it's probably bad, bad rings in the back there." <laughs> so yep. he knew right away. And so when we got the parts, he fixed it for you. So thanks, yep. Mike. Thanks, Mike. Yep. He's been working on mine fixing stuff, too. He also added on mine an hour meter, which you don't have. Not yet. Which I never had one. I already, since he put it on it, I got like 50 hours on it. So um, what else is different on ours? Um, you're, you've changed out your lever. I yep. haven't changed out mine yet. That's because I broke mine a couple times, three times, I think. Uh, Mike also put in a new filter, I see, for you, correct? Yep. And then yep. I have the, oh, that's right. the mount for an umbrella. Right. Oh, and he even put the name of the filter on there for you. Yep. Holy smokes. What a guy. What a guy. Uh, yeah, so you got the umbrella mount or shade mount, whatever that is. I do not have that, which is very nice. Um, you got a different sticker on the logo. It's a little different. But other than that, it's, what, like 95% the same other than the engine? I mean, Pretty much. there's really not much they've changed on them at all. Rims, now, tires all look the same. The wear is different because obviously um, mine's been uh, moving a little bit more wood because I am... I'm low on paint here, or uh, what do you call it, powder, powder coating. Um, your rails seem to be a little different than mine in that you've got some roughness in here, like maybe you got some, I uh, think you had any sand under there or rocks or something. It's kind of rough. I don't know. It was, it happened really fast. Mike actually took it down. He even polished it up and everything. Yeah. But they just got scratched up. Might have yeah. been some sand. See, it might have been smooth, but I use mine like all the time and i am getting some grooves in here for when you get a piece that's a piece especially elm it'll twist on you a little bit yep. so your 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 ram plate will you know kind of tilt one way or the other because there's so much pressure on it and yours has got a little bit on this one here but nothing over here yet i see yep but again once you get a couple more thousand <laughs> cords through here it might change a little bit but yeah other than that um you bought it because why well, I watched your channel, and this was the the best entry level splitter that we could really get for speed. And that was a big thing was I needed to get faster. Right. When right. you have a bunch of kids, you want to spend time with them. You want to get the most amount of done with your time possible. Yeah. yeah. I I picked I picked it number one because I was looking at kinetic splitters for speed. Yep. And I was, I was not that big yet in my wood selling career. And I thought $5,000 was enough to spend and my wife agreed. Um, Cause I was looking at you know, the 1222s yep. and the bigger machines and I thought that'd be great. 
but I just at the time I couldn't justify 10, 12,000, whatever it was. And I didn't think I wanted a log lift yet because I actually enjoy the exercise. I love it. I'm not like a lot of guys that want the machine to do everything. The main reason I started doing firewood was Most exercise. exercise. Money is just kind of a bonus yep. and being able to buy some stuff. Well, that and once you get up into the 1222s, you're also jumping up a large part in weight. Right, and I couldn't move it. moving it. Right, and I didn't have a tractor or ATV at the time, so I'll... Yeah, and I got this, but, you know, a three-wheeler is only going to tow so much. Yeah. So this is already pushing the limits of what it's going to tow. Right, And right. I don't want to go out and buy another piece of equipment just to move a splitter around. And the other nice thing is when you're not connected to your ATV and you only got to move it three, four feet this way and shove it over there in a little bit, it's, it's easy to move. Yep. And you cannot do that with almost any other machine, whether it's a, an, a vertical one, whether it's a Wolf Ridge or the Access. Those uh, don't move. They don't move. You've got to use machinery to move them. You kind of bring the wood to them. Yep. This, and you know, when you've got stuff like this, you can split here, work your way into the pile, go over there. You can take the splitter to the wood. Yep. And it's easier to move this a little bit than all of that a lot. All yeah. that wood. It's just that's just what life is. Eating. Well, the nice thing is, is without being able to have the space for a conveyor, a big splitter, I can take my tractor. I can put it right next to it. Yep. I can split right into the bucket, right. and right. then it's a little bit less handling of the wood. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then you're on your original hydraulic fluid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I didn't change mine for two years. I, I just figure changed, I'll probably I, do it this winter when I have a little bit of free. When time. mine was about a year old, I changed my filter. Yep. And I checked the fluid, and there was no water, and it wasn't milky, and it seemed to be fine. See, and Mike took some fluid out when he had changed the filter and did all the work onto it. Uh -huh. He goes, you just got too much fluid in there. I was like, I would have no idea. Yeah, well, and, see, this is a vented cap. Yep. And if you go over really bad bumps, have you noticed that it'll spill on you? That's why, that's <laughs> why it looks like, like that. that. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah, it can happen. You can have some of the hydraulic fluid spill on you. So there you go. So I think what we'll do next, seeing as we're here just admiring our hunks of machinery, uh, we will start them up and maybe try to do, just see how much difference there is in the split time as far as, you know, the actuation of the, the ram to see the cycle time, and then maybe just try each other's out and see what it likes. Cause I've never ran yours, and I don't think you've ever ran mine. Nope. So we're gonna touch each other's machine. I couldn't wait, just like a kid at Christmas. I think it might be, uh, is there a seam if you fold it? Well, maybe not, maybe you do have to peel it. What would you give me? I, I got you a reject, maybe. I don't know. I just grabbed one from the pile. I only have 500 of them. Well, Jimmy, <laughs> Christmas. I was too excited to put this on. Now I can't even get it open. Got to give it to somebody that can actually see, maybe. Well, I'm getting older. <laughs> How old are you now? 36. Oh, my gosh. You're just a kid. Be just, 37 in a couple weeks. Just a kid. I'm almost twice as old as you. <laughs> what in the... 36, what would I give to be 36 again? Pretty much almost anything. I understand that, because after I got hit by the truck, I sure as hell slowed down. Yeah, well, let's get this perfect. I, I don't do much so you got, perfect. You got the square out? Nope. That looks pretty good, actually. Oh, look at that. It doesn't even have bubbles in there or nothing. Oh, whoop, whoop, I had a little grease on it there. Sorry about that. What are you doing? My <laughs> sticker. You know either, how hard I had to work Now that? it's a good looking splitter. Now, now our splitters almost match good. again. So what I'm going to do when I go to the Paul Bunyan show this year, if somebody shows me a picture of them with their wood splitter, I'm going to give them a sticker. <laughs> it's the only way to get one. Well, well there's a couple other ways, but. I got one now. <laughs> yeah, you got one. <laughs> so we're going to fire these things up and uh, we will do some splitting here. I'm going to leave the camera on a tripod. We'll try to synchronize it so they go at the same time. I don't think there's going to be much of a difference. You think your opinion is that mine has more power? I think yours has a little bit more splitting power. Well, we'll find out right now. Mine always starts hard. Hey, they both started. I'll just watch you, you stay wet. Oh, and I got locusts. Yep. There's wind. Get it so it's just 
touching. Taking off with my wood. I'm taking this home with me. <laughs> you know, if you weren't so old, it would have went in there easier. What's that? If you weren't so old, it would have went in there easier. Yeah. I gotta widen this up or something? Pretty much. It's about <laughs> it. So Throw is it just always choke on? It. You gotta slide both of them over, throttle and choke. Both of these? Yep. Pull her and then flip off the choke, which is gray. Choke's gray. So there, we both split a couple chunks, nothing special. They're about identical speed-wise. Yep. You agree your engine's a little louder. My engine's definitely a little bit louder. And it sounds a little choppier. Your Honda sounds a little bit smoother than yeah, the Briggs. I would agree with that. And I think your engine might have a little more power, which why maybe it goes through a little more gas, maybe yep. a little more horsepower. I would agree with Again, that. Again, people will tell me what the 340 is horsepower-wise. I don't know if it's nine or 10 or 12 years is what? 14. 14, yeah. Does the job. Does the job. Um, to turn yours off, you just turn the gas off, whereas mine, I have an actual uh, electronic on-off switch. I wish that I had an on-off switch. I would have rather had that feature. And this one, when you have to move the levers in and out on the Briggs, it's actually pretty hard to move that. Yeah, they really the got to push on them. And yeah. The choke and the throttle levers, they're pretty hard to move. you got to push. Right. And the other thing is, like I said, you get two and a half hours, I get a little over three. Yep. Not that big of a deal. Um, your lever, maybe it's just because it's newer, is, yep. is much I gotta, stiffer and tighter. I got to push pretty hard on it yeah, to get this it one's to engage. Just, well, I got more leverage because mine's a little longer than yep. yours. I'll get mine. Uh, eventually, I'll have one of my buddies get around yeah, to machine right. me out something a little well, different. Like I was just telling Travis, what I did is I put a piece of just white PVC in here because this is just a long carriage bolt with the head of it sticking out the top. Then I just put layers of tape on it, so this is much softer on your hand. You notice the leverage, this is yep. easier to push. Yours is now easier to push, but it's kind of sharp up here on the yeah, top side, right. so if you're constantly throwing with the heel of your hand, right. it actually it kind of bruises right. that heel of your right. hand, and it 
kind of gets uncomfortable. Yeah, and this is, you're, you're on this all the time for three hours straight, and I never my hand never gets sore. You're touching so, every two seconds when you're running. Yeah, you're in and out. I'm, well, it's constantly. See yep. how that this, my my detent kind of catches there. Yep, I felt it, it was a little yeah, it's, choppy. Well, because it's it's been used a little bit. Just a wee bit. Um, but yeah, it's just an excellent machine. So and also you have a, a hole in yours with a is there a set screw in your your uh, what's that called? Um, um, what's geez. the name for that? The collar that's on the end here. I'll bring the camera over so you guys can see. Gland. It's called a gland. That's what that is. That is a gland. So you must have a set screw on yours because I see you've got a hole. There must be a set screw in there. Mine, there never was. And mine, after about a thousand cords, only a thousand, uh, it started to um, come out on me several times. So then uh, Bert drilled a hole in there and he put a screw in there. So it's, it's set in place because that was, that was something that did happen to it. And I've replaced my... Um, O-rings in here twice, and I've replaced the O-ring in the front of here twice also, the clean-out. Behind the clean-out, there's, it's like a ridged, it's a round, uh, it's like a round tube type of O-ring, and there's a ridge behind it, and it was all one. Well, they didn't have that, so I went to the hydraulic place. They gave me uh, a, a round front one and then just a flat, a flat one, and they said, just stack them like that's what they do all the time, and it's been working great ever since, so there's that. Um, but yeah, I... Like we were talking, price point, it's just an excellent splitter. And for the guys that think you got to have the big 30, 40 ton ones, with a single wedge, you can make any kind of wood look good. And because you got the speed, it's just fast. It Very just rarely with a single wedge do I get much stuck. I think the whole time I've got four pieces stuck on it. And usually it's operator air. For me it is, because you put Picking the wrong, wrong end. Right, you put the wrong point for contact. A lot of people don't know this. When you're splitting, you don't want to start with your crotchy end up front. You want to have it to the back so you got your clear grain wood in the beginning to start. And then you already have it starting, starting to split to open, and pull exactly. apart by yeah. the time that yep. it pushes it in. Yeah, so little things like that. That's something I want to do a video on someday. What, what I look at when I'm positioning a piece, where I'm centering it, off-centering it, centering it. Sometimes if you've got a crotch, you, if it's a smaller piece, you can go right down the middle just fine. Well, that, um, and usually a lot of times when I'm splitting, I'm going as fast as I can. Right. You, you don't always look at every single piece. Like, I gave you a big, gnarly, Yeah, I noticed that. You gave me a crappy piece. one. <laughs> and it's just one of those things yeah. where you're not necessarily looking at that, and no. all of a sudden you're stuck in there, and you got to get out either a, a sledgehammer or you got to pull it off with a chain. So have you done the chain thing that yes. works? And did you do it where you didn't hit your... Yes, I got lucky. You gotta be careful. It's, you gotta it's watch fast. It. Yeah. yeah. And I know the people in the comments will rip on it, but sometimes you can do what you have to do. To and I was off. in the middle of the woods and there was no axe or a mall near me. Yeah. I had the safety chains for the splitter and I was able to make those work. Oh, there you go. There you go. But yeah, it works. When I showed that to my brother the first time, he was like, oh my, because he splits a lot of nasty crap. Because he said he spent, you know, 20 years pounding with a mall. He never thought of using a re reverse pull of the hydraulics coming out because it works. It's got enough force to push it oh. in. It's got enough force to pull it out. It sure does, but you got to be careful because what you don't want to do... Because if you do, hit the backside, it's, it's going to mess up Yeah, the you don't want to smash that in there with a, a chain link or something. No. That's where it would be nice if you had some type of a hook welded on each side where you could just hook a standard piece, you know, and hook it around. That would be Hook nice. it here and hook it there. So if you get a friend that can weld, if you could weld some type of a hook just like you do on a tractor bucket for hooking onto stuff, that would be... That would be something like you got in your tractor, I see, where you got yep. a hook on it. That would be something that would be nice, because you could hook one side, no matter where you were, you could loop around a big piece, have enough chains, so you got like, you would need maybe an eight footer at the most, six footer, mm -hmm. and then hook it on both sides and just back it out. And that way you wouldn't have any problem with um, smashing your gland back here or ruining anything in the, your plumbing. You know what? Eastamate should pay you for some of these ideas. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, uh, they pay me funny. They, they let me use their stuff and send me stuff. So I, I have no problem. That's part of the reason I think why Andrew gets his hands in the people's, um, you know, production that he does is that he's going to hear about stuff. Well, I'm sure they do. The, the reason why I went with an Easton Maid was because there was so much information right. out on the internet he puts his stuff in so many people's videos, like you had bought yours, but he gives other channels oh, yeah. the you know splitters and stuff to see the products. Yep. If I wouldn't have ever seen this running, I would have never bought this. Because you couldn't go look at it. And that's the other thing. He knows that because he doesn't have distributors. Yep. Uh, he has to get it out there. Like Wolfridge, they have distributors, right. and they right. got some that are not that far away from here. They're not even that far away from us. No, three hours. And... Yeah. You can go see the machines, whereas this, I couldn't see it running except for on your channel. But I've had people stop in quite often at my place. That, that was before I knew it. how close you were to me. Well, I'm trying to hide. 
He found me. Dang it. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. Yeah, I know. Well, there you go, folks. You got to see two ultras for the price of one. What a deal you had today. That's all we got. Come on back tomorrow, 5.30 a.m. We'll have another video for you. Thanks for letting me come and play today. No problem. Thank you. What do you got to say to people? Good night, Irene.